We've all heard stories about hearing aids that just don't work. So today, we're talking about getting it right the first time with Dr. Danny Genevico. And there is a method to this madness, isn't there, about how to do it right. There's a gold standard. There is. Uh, a lot of people complain that when they get a hearing aid, it makes everything loud, but not clear enough to understand speech. Um, it's just like glasses. You can have glasses that magnify, but if they don't meet your prescriptive needs, then you haven't really solved the problem. When you're dealing with a hearing loss, there are two issues you have to deal with. One is the frequency range of the loss of hearing that they have, so we're sure that we give them enough sound in the frequency ranges that are at deficit. But something that people don't really realize is that every ear is shaped differently, and because of the shape of the ear, sounds amplified from a hearing aid will be amplified differently from patient A to patient B. Remember when you were a kid and you got a Coke bottle and you filled it halfway with water and you blew across the top and you heard a tone and then you filled it up a little more and you blew again and lo and behold the tone changed. Or the guitar player with an acoustic guitar that strums it and then takes the same strings, puts it on another guitar, same tension, and it sounds different. That's what's called resonance. And in order to understand resonance, we have to make measurements actually in the ear canal. So it's not just a matter of putting a hearing aid on. So uh, one of the technologies that we're using now is called real ear probe measures. And this really is the gold standard. Now the way this is done is we place a tiny little tube into the ear canal. Uh, it's not uncomfortable. It's, it's uh, not much bigger than a little hair. Uh, and that tube is like a probe microphone pickup so that when we present a sound, we actually are measuring the sound at the level of the eardrum, which gives us a much more accurate frequency response for that particular individual. You can take two people mm -hmm. who have the same hearing loss, who have the same hearing aid set exactly the same. One will be happy and one will not mm -hmm. based on the difference in the ear canal resonance. So, at this point, we're going to just do a little demonstration of how this goes about. Okay. What I'm going to have you do is look right towards the speaker, and you're just going to hear a story that has all of the sounds that are in the English language. All right. Here we go. A carrot is a long reddish-yellow vegetable which has several thin leaves on a long stem. So what did we just learn from that? Okay, if you look at this uh, graph, you see numbers from small to large. Uh, that's a measure of frequency, or what we commonly term as pitch. The small number would be low pitch, a large number would be high pitch, just like a piano keyboard. And so we're measuring how much sound is at each frequency or pitch level. So without a hearing aid, this individual, uh, this green line is about what he's hearing without any assistance. Uh, these little green crosses up here would be the target for his prescription for his particular hearing loss. So when we take into account the hearing loss, the hearing aid, the speech stimulus, and the shape of this patient's ear, we want to try to match that as close as possible. So when we turn his hearing aid on, after we've made the adjustments, you can see this blue line pretty much perfectly matches the frequency target that we need to match his prescription. So by doing this, we rule out things like uh, an ear canal that's large or small, because again, every ear canal has a different resonance and it can give him a completely different kind of sound. But if you make a measurement on each individual, then you've taken into account the variations that would come from the shape and the size of the ear. So this is basically the gold standard. It's used by uh, most of the audiologists in the medical centers and uh, the more advanced practices across the country. It's not a perfect solution, but it's a pretty good solution. No hearing aid will ever replicate your God-given ear because the neurons in the cochlea are damaged and they will never reproduce a signal uh, with the pristine effect that they once did. But you want to be as accurate as you can. And generally speaking, when you use a technology like this, you can expect about a 75 to 80 percent improvement in speech understanding for most individuals. So when you're considering getting a hearing aid, I think it's very important that you ask the individual that's going to be fitting the hearing aid do you do real ear probe measures? And if they say they don't, then you might be well uh, to search out a clinic that does use this technology. 
And you can get your audiology needs met at either of Audiology Hearing Aid Associates locations. There's one on Langhorne Road in Lynchburg. The number there is 434-528-4245. Their Danville location is on Main Street and the number there is 434-799-6288. You can also find out more online at digitalhearingforyou.com.